Hello folks, Home Handyman here. I'm going to do a video. I'm going to show you how I modified a Harbor Freight air tank. I have a friend in Edmonton, Canada, sent me an email wanting to know, hey, how did you put all these pieces together and how did you do that? And I said, it's easier. I'm just going to make a video because I can upload it and share it with YouTube. And there's a few different ways to do it. I'll go over all three of them. But this is the tank. Nice steel tank. It's great. This stuff is kind of junk. It works. And this is not the original hose or the original tip. I put those on there. But this is how I have it modified for right now. But I made another one. I modified it real well. I sold it. So now I got this one and I'm going to modify this one again. So when you get them, this is the part we're going to replace all the way through the hose. I'll pan down. I'll show you a picture, a better picture of the tank. And then we'll go from there on how to modify them and what we're going to do. So. Here we go. Let me pan down. Okay, um, here's that shot of the entire tank. It's all steel, so that's good, and it's got a handle. That's great. It's easy to carry. It's not that heavy. Okay, the area we want to concentrate on is replacing everything from what goes in the tank all the way out, including the hose. And then, of course, it's whatever end you want to put on it when we're done. So one minute, let me get the dry erase board. Okay, so let's discuss this now that I have it on the board here. And then I'll pan up and we'll talk about some do's and don'ts. The first thing that you want to do is right here. That's a half inch to one quarter iron reducer. You can get that at Home Depot, Lowe's, or anywhere. Take off everything that's on the tank. That's the first piece to put on. Now make sure you get some thread tape because the next piece that you're going to get is this one quarter brass reducer. Don't buy these things from Harbor Freight. I'll explain to you why in a little while. One, because the tolerances suck on all their fittings, to be honest. And just for a few cents more or very little, you can get actually quality made fittings. Anyway, there's a little one quarter inch reducer. You're going to put that into that half to one quarter. You went from iron to brass now. Everything else is going to be brass. Then, after you have that one quarter on, you're going to put a T-piece on there. And the T-piece is brass also. So, let's look at the one side over here. And you can buy all of these parts at Lowe's or Home Depot. And Husky makes them and a few others. And actually, the one made by Husky comes with a quarter inch right here, threaded male. So you have the female female and you have the female here, the T adapter, it's on there. You have your new gauge now, which is far better than Harbor Freight's. It's got a one quarter inch threaded male already for you to put in. That's what the space is right here. I left the space. My friend up in Edmonton, Canada wanted me to show him or text him on how to do this. This is better. I just show him on video. All right. Anyway, back to this. So that takes care of the left side or whatever side you want to put the gauge on. So let's talk about the other side for a minute. Now over here, you are going to want to put a quick disconnect next coming off of here. So the way that you could do that, you can put right here, because I put a note up here, one quarter inch threaded adapters on both ends so right here one quarter one quarter both threaded that'll join these two pieces together here so now you have a quick disconnect hooked up to it i paused the video for a minute i had somebody running a machine in the background okay so you over here you have the quick disconnect hooked up now okay now right here i told you you got to go female to male air hose fitting right here. So you want to go female, right here, male, that'll join these two together. And then you're going to put a valve in here. Now I call them gate valves, swing valves, you know, whatever term you want to put. And it has a handle sticking off of it right there. Okay. Then you turn around and you're going to put another male to female fitting here. So what that does is with that fitting, you're going to have the adapter here, which goes to any other quick disconnect that you have hooked to an air compressor. You just stick it on there, release it, and it locks here. 
and then you turn around with your compressor you can fill this tank up this works real good and I set mine up this way and the reason for it is I can take this piece off of this quick disconnect and then I can hook up anything I want to the quick disconnect I was using it or giving it to my daughter and my wife they have a, a barn out in thermal then they go out there and they can hook up a blowgun to it they can hook up an air inflator to it they can hook up anything they want because this quick disconnect will allow you to hook up different pieces of equipment that you want to use so this is the way that I hook it up now if you want not to go through all this and you want an abbreviated version if you just you can make just this piece right here you have the valve and then you have the adapter that screws into here and then you have the fitting on the other side where your hose from your adapter can just hook onto here on this side this adapter will hook right onto the Harbor Freight hose adapter and you can fill the tank that way you don't have to make all the rest of this if you don't want to this is just a real quick fast refill but it didn't cost that much it really didn't it's just a little bit of money and you can make this entire setup and then that makes this entire piece of equipment one badass piece of equipment um, on a scale if I said you know you got very poor poor good very good excellent the way that you buy it straight out of the store it's okay falls just a little bit below good in my opinion because of this right here however because this is all steel down here the nice part is I can redo this section and I can take it from something that's less than good to something that is very good and I mean very good by the time you do this setup and like I said one of two ways let's go over it one more time I'll tell you the third way we'll wrap this up so on this we're gonna go from here with an adapter to a one quarter everything else in here is brass now you have a gauge that you bought at Home Depot or Lowe's it's got the quarter inch on it you screw it on use thread tape on everything I don't care what they tell you just go ahead and do it as a precaution you have an adapter here that will take this T and put it onto a quick disconnect from here you're going to put another female to male adapter in here and that's going to hook right onto this valve but it also quick disconnects here it quick disconnects over here by the time you put these two on open up the valve fill the tank the gauge is here to tell you when it gets to 140 150 and it's a fantastic setup you want to do the shortcut just make this here put this adapter this adapter so you can hook this into a quick disconnect on your um, actually your tank and the hose that came with it and on this side you hook it to the hose to your compressor open the valve and you can fill the tank straight up and you can bypass all of this but I don't think bypassing it it's only an opinion I'm just telling you another way to do it the whole setup I think is best now the third option in this whole thing and I didn't I don't really want to go into a lot of detail because I don't like the idea of it let me pan up and I'll show you um, I made a note here once okay now I haven't done this I don't run air tools off of it I'm told that you can I'm told that it goes between 50 and 60 psi to run like a brad nailer or a small nailer or a stapler but I'm just telling you I haven't tried it so that's what several people have said between the forum and online your tank mine will go up to about 140 150 that's all the farther you're going to take it so that's that but it will hold quite a bit of air it'll fill what about two two and a half tires something like that so i have used this on that honda that i had sitting for years it had four flats i made two trips i got a plenty of air in them to get them to the gas to drive it to the gas station and fill it full of air so it does work really well now the third thing down says you can put in line in this whole setup that we're describing you can put a regulator a bigger nicer one and have an oiler with it you know you put the oil in there and then you don't have to worry about putting any kind of you know oil in line you know with your air tools so you don't burn them up the other method is just to put like three four five drops I mean in through your air tool uh, in through that the end of it and then you know run it for a while and keep adding it and there's all I don't want to get into it but there's all kinds of variations on how often you should keep dropping oil into it um, I didn't show you that setup I will put up a picture so you can see somebody else that's done it online it's not me that did it and I'm not going to take credit for it but because I'm kind of bad mouthing it in a way I won't say anything about the author but I thought it was clever what he did and yes it works I'm sure it works very well it's just for me I don't have 
I don't want anything set up like that. I have a real compressor and I have a real regulator and I have a real setup on everything and I didn't make shift something that's, um, you know, that's portable. Now the good thing about that is if you're building like some kind of an outhouse or you're building some kind of a storage shed, you may want to go that route, especially if you can't get an air hose all the way out to it. Or if you're working on anything where you can't get an air hose all the way out to it, this may be a good option for you. And you can buy all of the components at Harbor Freight. And if you don't like the quality of their regulators and you know their oil baths and all that, then go get them from Harbor, or I'm sorry, go get them from Lowe's or Home Depot. And the the suggestion was somebody put down on here. I want to talk about number four for a minute. And again, I'm not going to mention the guy's name that I took. He has fantastic pictures of these setups, and I'm going to show them to you because I'll show you exactly on a real picture how I did it and all three variations. Like I said, I don't believe in the third one. I'm not going to badmouth him, but what he said is, hey, you can take a quarter inch adapter from Harbor Freight and the tolerances that the Chinese or Japanese that made them, they're poor so they don't really fit like they should at all well i'd believe that and then his solution to the problem was hey the 3 8 one you know they fit fairly decent into there and just wrap them real good with tape and just you know take your wrench and just kind of really kind of you know add a lot of pressure and get that sucker down on in there and it'll work fine okay i think that that's foolish i think it's something that you should never suggest anybody should do that the cost difference between Harbor Freight's brass adapters and everything that I showed you and the difference in price at Lowe's or Home Depot is so little, it's not even worth, I don't think even worth discussing. I mean, so go for the better quality made fittings. Go to Home Depot, go to Lowe's, and at least those that are made there, I know that are much higher quality than Harbor Freight. I always buy all of my fittings from Lowe's or Home Depot. You could even go to the auto parts store, I suppose. I don't get them from Harbor Freight. I've learned way long ago in the past, he's right, they fit like crap. The tolerances are horrible. I'm sure the quality control is just as bad because they probably figure we're a bunch of dummies over here and once the stuff's imported, we'll buy it. And if it doesn't work, we'll throw it away. We'll go buy whatever. And they sell this stuff like ice water on a hot day. So forget it, don't do it. Take my advice, do it this way. Now, we're at the end, okay, and so I'm going to pan back and I'm going to talk for a minute and I'm just going to show you all of the pictures in real time. Hold on one sec. I wanted you to get one more glimpse of this. Okay, one more glimpse of this before we, you know, we go to real photos. Um, I just want you to see this, you know, one more time and um, just a couple of different notes, I guess, or comments to make. I think it was uh, Home Depot. I stood inside of the store and almost put this whole thing together that I'm showing you before I bought it. Just to make sure I'm not running back and forth swapping out parts. I grabbed one of those little rolls of Teflon tape. I came home, I put it together. It, you, you can put this together real fast. Okay, um, one trick you can do um, to my friend Ed up in Edmonton, when you see this video, and I'll try to post it tonight, take your uh, cell phone, go to photo, take a photograph of this, take it with you when you go down there. This is exactly how I did mine, you were asking. This is it right here. And to everybody else, I mean, you could always just photo it, like I said, make sure you get, this way you have like a parts list, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, doing this has saved me like a few times. It's not a tool that I use regularly to answer your question on the forum. No, I don't use it all the time. It's every once in a while, I suppose, but it sure has come in damn handy the times that I've used it because you're able to take air somewhere where you otherwise can't get to with a hose. So I guess I hopefully that, that answers your question, I hope. Um, where do you get the iron reducer? Well, you get it at Lowe's or Home Depot. They have them. Just take a look. You'll see them right there along with all the rest of the brass parts. Okay, another question off the forum. Um, one of the people says, hey, I haven't had any problems with the fittings from Harbor Freight. Okay, if you've had a good experience, I'm not telling you not to try it, not to do it. I'm just telling you from the past when I've done it, they're horrible. And I threw them out. I didn't even bother to try to take them back. It wasn't that much money in fittings. And then I went down to, I think, True Value here in town. Um, but pretty much everybody has either a Lowe's or 
Home Depot or a big box somewhere near them, I'm just saying I think that the fittings are a much better quality when they're made by a better manufacturer in the U.S. and the tolerances are better. That's just my opinion. I mean, look, man, I mean, if you've had good luck with them, go ahead. I'm just sharing with you my experience. That's all. Well, there's usually a safety relief valve on most of these that says, hey, how come, uh, you know, or do I run the risk of ever overfilling it? No. If you set it up the way I did, you have a gauge. When you get around 140, 150, you'll see it's red. That's kind of like you're getting into the danger zone. And that's enough PSI, and I stop it there. And I'm not so sure my compressor is going to fill it past that because I have a pressure relief valve on my big Ingersoll ran to, you know, it would blow off anyway. If it doesn't blow off at the tank, it'll blow off there at 150. So, um, but you have that gauge to go by, so that's a safety precaution. Um, the tank, like I said, uh, to answer another question, yes, it's all steel except for up where the fittings are and then they went the cheapest route possible is my opinion that's the reason why um, you go through this adapter setup and you have one kick-ass little thing when you're done okay I think that's it for the questions uh, which ones are posted you can leave me more in the comments below this is the home handyman please hit subscribe let me know what you think maybe you have a better way of doing this or maybe you have a different way like I said they're not my pictures um, so but they are the way that I did it and the way that I will do it again. So anyway, thank you folks very much. Everybody have a good day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.